Wake up to the facts. When good people are silent, freedom dies. Don't be afraid to ask those tough questions. Be a patriot and join the struggle to keep America free. Help us end the silence. I think it is important that America know what we're talking about here. At this point in the Senate, 94% of all the bills are passed unanimous consent. 94%. So this is hardly a lack of productivity. And what this means is 94% of the bills that pass the Senate have no debate, no vote, no amendments, no reading of the bill, no online disclosure, and very often no score from the Congressional Budget Office. When I first took over the steering committee, one of the things I learned real quickly is that whenever we're having a break, if we're going for a week like we are this week, on my way to the airport, I would get a call from staff telling me there were dozens of requests to pass bills, unanimous consent, because they knew we were all out of, going out of town. And a lot of them had some pretty big price tags on them. Folks, you don't get $13 trillion in debt when you're doing things right. And part of the problem is that 94% of the bills that pass the Senate pass in secret. The problem is not secret holes, it's a secret passing of bills, when very often we don't even know who's requesting bills. And if we didn't have staff available at night when they run their so-called hotlines, which means the phone in your office rings, they ask if you will agree to pass a bill. You haven't read it, you don't know what it's cost. If you ask to read it for the next day or two, it's very likely that some association is getting emails from either the Republican or the Democrat side that, that Senator Mint is holding this desperately needed piece of legislation, who nobody else has read. I frankly think passing 94 percent of the bills without anybody even reading them or knowing they're getting passed is not a good way to do business. I think it's fair to have some system where, first of all, you cannot secretly ask for a bill to be passed unanimous consent. And that's what goes on here today. If you want something passed unanimous consent in the dark of night, that you have to put it on the Internet for at least three days with a cost from the Congressional Budget Office so we know what we're getting into. Again, I want to remind you, we don't have a problem in Washington of not passing enough bills or spending enough money. The problem we have is we're passing bills that we don't even read that have price tags that are running our country into a crushing debt. Well, that was Senator DeMint speaking on the Senate floor about this ridiculousness that's going on right now and how most of these bills are passed. Now, the best part why I love this clip and the best part of this is, is just so you know, he's a Republican. Uh, the, the Senate's controlled by Democrats, and they're both guilty of it, both parties. It's, it's absolutely not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's a Congress issue. So you're looking at 94% of what the Congress does. They don't even see the bill, let alone read it. They've never even seen it. They don't have a copy of it. They don't know who sponsored it. They don't know any of these things. And these things are passed through unanimous consent, which basically says, uh, you know, they do the eyes and the nays, I believe, and the, then they say the eyes have it, you know, and that's it. Uh, Sarge, have you heard that before, that clip? That's pretty recent from the Oh, mid. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the former Democratic uh, Speaker of the House uh, lived by it. You know, you have to pass the bill in order to find out what's in it. It's a well-established principle up there on, in Foggy Bottom. Yeah, they all believe – they all tend to believe this pretty much. Uh, and, well, Obama, and Obama promised to, to give us three days to look at everything and post it online. And he made all these promises, and then he ran through the health care bill with the damn thing wasn't even printed yet. Well, how do we know he was lying about it? Because his mouth was moving. I mean, the man <laughs> simply cannot say anything without lying about it. I mean, he lies literally. He he he, he gives lies in litters, like some sort of prolific, prevaricating political sow. I've never seen anything like him. I've never seen a man alive with the fecundity of this guy ever. I mean, one speech he gave seven and a half lies, seven lies in two and a half minutes. Unbelievable. Hey, you got to give a little bit of credit. Bigger lie than 
Clinton never was, but he, but the, you know, the press won't tag him with the tag liar. Which you could, I, I've got a compendium of about oh, 378 lies he's told in public speeches on the public record, with videotape to prove it. And yeah, yet, but, still, he's not getting tagged with the term liar like Bill Clinton. He but lies. In fairness, so now, hold on. He's going to be hold, transferred hold, to take, another liar. Take a breath, Sarge. Take a breath. In fairness, Obama doesn't control the rules in the Senate. He has nothing to do with that. Nothing. True. You would agree with that, right? I mean, it's true. the truth. That is true. That is true. And the senators make their own rules. And uh, and as well as the... the Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, the I, senators, I can flash out there for a minute. Yeah, the senators make their own rules. And, you know, each party, when they're in power, they, they make these claims against the other party. And they do the identical same thing. So if the Republicans don't like the rules, when they take over, they can change them, but they don't. See, that's that's the thing that needs to be talked about. Not, you know, here's here's the best part. Congress has got a, about a twenty less than twenty percent approval rating, okay, <laughs> but eighty percent of the Congress people get reelected. So, you know, there's a huge disconnect with people. That say they don't like Congress, but then in turn those same people reelect their congressperson. That's a problem. No, they like their congressman because he brings the pork home to them. There's so many things the federal government is doing that the Constitution didn't authorize it to do that every member of Congress can find something to give pork to somebody in his district to get him reelected. It's just that simple. That's part of it. What problem is not the problem that uh, your Congress hasn't made the right rules. They've created so much federal government that isn't authorized by the Constitution. But that's not a Democrat or Republican problem. It's a Congress problem. I mean, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, The people this were – the, the Democrats are much worse, but Republicans are bad too, They're more than bad enough. Well, it's – you know, I like Ronald Reagan. I, I think he was a decent president, but he campaigned to shrink government. Government is the problem. That's the famous quote from Ronald Reagan. Government's not the solution. Government's the problem. Government grew under Reagan. True, but you know he was hobbled by a Democratic Congress. You know, it, all spending originates there, uh, and and he and let's face it, he, he made deals. He made deals. Uh, he did. He made deals with Congress because in order to get anything done, that's what he had to do. But he at least brought to the attention of many American people who didn't know before that in fact the federal government was the problem. That was. Like a, a sea change for a long time. Just the acknowledgement of the problem that was important in and of itself. Well, he he certainly well they didn't call him the great communicator for nothing. He certainly brought a lot of things to light that weren't uh, you know. And the economy happened to do extremely well under his watch, which was a huge part of him getting reelected. So. True. You know, some t here's the here's the thing that I think upsets a lot of people, and the Democrats and, and Republicans both pander to this, and that's why I think they're both equally as corrupt. And it goes like this: you know, the old axiom in politics, "Lives by the sword, die by the sword." And when things go bad on your watch, you take the rap, and when things go good on your watch, you take the credit, even if you had nothing to do with it. So. You know, I can't stand Obama, and I pray every day that he doesn't get reelected. But we need to address the fact that Congress certainly needs to get their share of the blame because there's absolutely they are, you know, co-conspirators for lack of a better word, and a lot of what's wrong with America. You know, absolutely, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the very they, fact that they they, they go on with for this no more, but they don't do that. Like you said, they're too busy worried about getting reelected, getting money for their district. You know, if there's a record number of millionaires in Congress right now. There's more millionaires in Congress than not millionaires in Congress today. Now, a million dollars but may see, not be what it used to be, but it sure is a heck of a lot of money. Yeah, see, everyone, though, today is complaining about the amount of poor, uh, lobbyists in Washington. And I, I understand uh, the, the, the inordinate influence that many lobbyists, why people are upset about it. Let's face it. It's one of the two constitutionally protected occupations in the Constitution. And why are there so many lobbyists? There's so much government. There's so many things people go to Washington and try to get federal statutes manipulated on their behalf. That's why there's so much crony capitalism. 
<laughs> the problem is government, not lobbyists. Really, not strictly uh, speaking, not per se. It's government. Why? Why does government have so much influence? See, the founding fathers well, said, "Sarge, Sarge, Sarge." And we got there wasn't supposed to be. You, you you weren't supposed to have to worry about so much government. And who okay, was getting Sarge. elected? We got the sixty-second mark. Thanks for calling in. Feel free to well, call in again. Monday through well, Thursday, ten to uh, ten to eleven Eastern Time. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. Hope to talk to you again. Yep. Wake up to the facts. When good people are silent, freedom dies. Don't be afraid to ask those tough questions. Be a patriot and join the struggle to keep America free. Help us end the silence. FreedomDies.com. Let your voice be heard. <laughs>